Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Derek B. Um, uh, we're with uh, a good friend of mine, um, Darnell. We're over at the Cherokee Barbershop located in North Cross, Georgia. We're going to be talking with um, Darnell today in regards to starting your own barbershop. Some of the steps that you have to take in the process involved in uh, obtaining that obtaining that goal. So um, with no further ado, my man Darnell, um, why don't you start talking to the people and explain to them a, a little bit about you, where you're from, your whole name and everything else. How y'all doing? Uh, I'm Darnell and I'm currently a barber at Church of Hills like you said and uh, we're just going to really give you some foundation and, and some knowledge on what it is for aspiring barbers to try to uh, enhance their craft and to you know be potential business owners. And one thing, a couple things that I've done so far is to try to study the demographics of the area, get your business plan together, find out what grants and, and programs are going to be suitable for you so you can get the necessary funding for what it is that you're trying to do. Hey Darnell, so um, can you tell us uh, what, what, what actually inspired you to become a barber? When did you start? Who was your mentors growing up? Well, I've been cutting in a hair salon in the barber shop since the summer of 96. And I was cutting hair in my mother's bathroom when I was 16, so that's really where the inspiration came from. My mother always told me, she was like, son, you're either going to get an education or you're going to get a trade. So I, I went to trade school, went to barber school, and uh, I've been proficient at it ever since. And uh, as I was growing up, man, my, my dad and my parents, I was, you know, blessed to have both of them. They were kind of an inspiration and, and a tool for me to really be business-minded the way I am right now. And uh, I'm a people's person, so uh, I, I like to deal with people. So uh, barbershop, man, it, it was a vessel for me to really spread my wings and, and, and give people insight and knowledge. Right, right. So what what were some of the, the steps you had to take as far as education-wise to broaden your skills in, in the area of becoming a barber? I mean, that's a good question because a lot of barbers are barber in the barber shops and they don't have a license. So I, ha I went to barber school and the things that you learn in barber school are not uh, are, are essential for your, your, your craft. A lot of barbers in the barber shop think they can cut hair off. I don't need the school, but you've got to go to school and get their education and get your license because that, that license is going to broaden your, your your spectrum as far as how you deal with customers, right. the different types of haircuts that you don't think that you do know, so it's important that you go to school. Right, right. I think that's very important to um, get yourself grounded education-wise, and, and, and also I would imagine there would be licenses that you would need it, that's mandatory in order for you to operate as a business, am I correct? Yeah, you are, that is correct. It is, it's, it's, uh, the state board of regulation require any barber in that particular state that they're working in to have a, a, a barber's license. Okay. And, and there is a fine if you do get caught in the barber shop without your license, uh, that the state board can fine you up to $500 and take your picture and then that would hinder you from even going to school to try to get your license anyway. So wow. be very careful for all the bootleg barbers in the barber shop. Go get your <laughs> education and, and really take pride in your, your craft. If you take pride in what you do and behind this chair, then you're going to take the necessary steps to go to school and get that education. Right, right. You hear that, uh, ladies and gentlemen? You definitely have to acquire the right licenses. Very important. And, and what what licenses would that be out, out here in Georgia? Well, in Georgia, the, the requirements are that you a barber has to take fifteen hundred clock hours mm -hmm. in in Georgia for, for you to become a barber, and, right. and that's mandated all the way across the board in the state of Georgia. Different states like New York are eleven hundred, and California is like eighteen hundred. Wow. But the, the norm for basic is fifteen hundred clock hours that you need to go to get your barber license, and they only don't even teach you barbering. They teach you cold ways, how to perm. The curriculum is broader than what people really think. It's not all about cutting hair. Right, so there's a lot more involved in actually taking the steps to becoming a barber than just sitting, uh, standing and standing up and cutting somebody's hair as they come into your shop. That is correct. There's um, education, number one, and there's also acquiring licensing. Now, National image. All of that is is, is is important to you, your barber craft. They teach you how to be on time, be proficient, how to right. speak, you know, and create your vocabulary when you're doing consultations with the client. Okay. So all those things are very important that you want to, you know, take it, adhere to as you're becoming a barber. Okay. Well, that, that's very important. That's definitely very important. I appreciate you telling them that. Um, also, uh, as far as an internship, is there like a certain amount of hours that you have to acquire before you actually go out and start cutting people's hair? Well, actually, there the internship will be, the correct terminology for that would be apprenticeship. 
Okay. And one, every barber shop can have one apprenticeship in their shop. And what that does is allow the barber to cut under somebody's license that's been licensed for at least a year while they're getting their license. And that takes 1,800 hours. Wow. That takes, um, it gives you 18 months in the barber shop under somebody's license. You take the test and then you go to state board and you can do it that way. But the catch is you can only have one apprenticeship per shop. Oh, one apprenticeship one per shop. Yeah. So if you have somebody in your shop already, that's pretty much a wrap, as, as you're pretty much saying. Yeah, yeah. so if there's an apprenticeship <laughs> on there, and a lot of people don't want to go to school because school takes <clears> a lot of time. Right. So you're in school full time, so you really can't make no money as a barber. And a lot of people don't go to school because of that purpose right there. Well, I got to make money. I got to feed my kids. I got, you know, so they come into the barber shop, and these owners right. are letting them in the barber shop. We need to really set a mm. standard across the board that you need to go get your license. And these barbers... These owners need to educate these kids. Like, look, I'll help you get your license. I'll help you get the necessary information and get funding because this Pell Grants, this uh, financial aid out there, there's all kinds right, of programs right, out there that right, you don't absolutely. necessarily have to pay out of your pocket and go to barber school. You hear that, guys? So, some of you guys that's on a budget right now, you know, we're at a crisis. <laughs> I mean, economically, we had one of the worst periods we've been in a long time. That's why the president's getting all these stimulus packages and stuff together to try to help a lot of us because we're suffering right now. So you don't have to use that as a deterrent as far as not having enough money to fund what you want to do. There's a lot of different educational programs in, uh, right now in the urban communities that will provide you the right resources in order for you to go out there and, and, and get your education straight so you can go up and do what you want to do, which is either become a barber or anything else you want to do. The barber works in a day. Uh, generally, that would depend on the, the barbershop ownership. But generally, you're going to work between eight hours to ten hours a day. And in this in this field, people that are trying to say is the, the barber shop a good profession to go? This is a recession-proof job. Mm -hmm. The sky is the limit. For example, just not to you know put my, my business out there, but on a Saturday you can make three to four hundred dollars in one day. Wow. Wow. Having communication skills with your client. I'm going to show you all something. And would that be like an average Saturday or would that be like a good Saturday? That An average Saturday would be about $200. That's average. That's, That's in one slow, day, yeah, huh? One day is a slow day. And if, if you look at this, I have an appointment sheet that I organize my clients so they don't you have bring to bring that closer up. So. so they don't have to wait. I put okay. their name down and their time of their appointment. All right. and, 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 and you keep yourself <clears> organized. You, 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 this is a business and you treat it like a business. And if you do, people will reflect on that. And, and they, will, they will spend money with you, and, and, and they will tell other people about you. Right. You see that, guys? You know what? And I wrote an article about this, um, and one of the articles was about affiliate, um, interacting with so, uh, internet marketing, social media marketing, and basically interacting with your public, and basically being organized. That is showing proof that interacting with your public and also getting yourself to a situation where you're, you're being accurate in the amount of people that you're dealing with and keeping a list of people that you're dealing with, how important that is into uh, being Very professional important. and keeping a record of what you're doing. So um, tell us on um, on, a, on a normal day what it's life like is being a barber. Well, you got uh, people coming from all walks of life coming into the barber shop. And you're going to be a vessel of conversation. You're going to have a doctor come in your, your chair. You're going to have a conversation with him. You're going to have a mechanic. You're also going to have a guy that's been down on his luck. He might, you know, had an argument with his wife. And you're going to, you know, a haircut is like therapy. He's going to come in. You're going to give him a therapeutic haircut. And he's going to go out feeling good. So not only is you a barber, you're a vessel to be a, a, a blessing in people's lives. So you got to be careful on the type of conversation you're having in the shop. And um, and the things that you're gonna be saying to certain clients, because you never know how they're gonna feel. When they <laughs> a little bit of psychology involved yeah. here, huh? So I mean, it, it's more than ha it's haircutting. But me personally, I like to you know find out what what, what kind of job they do to network, keep a rolodex of your clients in the specific jobs that they do, because you never know you might need them. Your car might break down, you need a mechanic. You need a hotel, you know you got a guy at Marriott, so he's constantly networking with other people. Right. And and, and you're keeping that Rolodex and, and you are keeping you know, you're making new friends. Right, right, right. At the same time. Okay, that's that's very good advice. Now let's talk about the juicy stuff. Here's the stuff that everybody wants to know about. Starting your own barber shop. Um what is what are some of the process, some of the steps involved in getting a brick and mortar up? Um licensing as far as the brick and mortar is concerned and, 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 and just going out there and, and taking the necessary steps in order to, to obtain your own, your own business. Okay, once you...